Every morning when I leave for work, one thought crosses my mind. What if there's someone waiting for me as I open the garage door? Now, that's never actually happened, but here's what has happened more than once. My wife opens the garage, backs out, and forgets that there's a car parked in the driveway. You can imagine how that ends. This smart home automation was submitted by Percy. To solve this, you need only three pieces of hardware, door window sensor, camera, and a smart bulb. Let's explore this automation solution and what I would use to improve it. Get excited. Whether you want to avoid intruders or avoid a mechanics bill, this automation has the ability to help. Now, warning, I'm simply telling you how I would approach this, not how you should approach this. I'm not your dad. Subscribe though. The most complicated hardware required for this automation would be the camera that is facing the driveway. The ideal camera would be a PoE camera that always is on and watching. However, you could make it work with a good Wi-Fi camera. But if you're looking for a solution that would work in most cases, you would probably need something like Frigate. Now, this is a software solution that can take any camera stream and run it through machine learning models to tell you if there's motion provided or like some kind of object in the frame. Like it basically gives you object detection. That's what I'm trying to say. You get object detection using Frigate. This is a free way to upgrade cheap existing cameras capabilities. If you're using a Wi-Fi camera or your camera doesn't support RTSP, you might also need scripted to act as like a middleman to connect your camera feed to Frigate. I have a few videos that I did recently that kind of walks through what scripted is and Frigate, how they connect together and the things that you can do with it. You can go and check that out. Let's say your camera is connected. What's next? Well, you're gonna need a sensor on the garage door. Not like the one that's sliding up and down, but more so the one that you use to get into the garage itself. Now, alternatively, you could use a motion sensor or a millimeter wave sensor as this lets you trigger the automation only when you are physically in the garage. The last thing needed is a smart bulb. This is what you're gonna use to alert yourself if something is wrong. Now, here's what this automation would look like in practice. Now, I don't have a garage or any of these things, so this is a reenactment. When presence is detected in the garage, check the camera feed. If Frigate detects that there's a car or a person in the driveway, set the light to red. Otherwise, set the light to green. Now, this is what Percy suggested in the post, and I think this is a solid implementation. Using a combination of Home Assistant and Frigate, the automation should work well, assuming that you have all the hardware I mentioned earlier. Now, let's explore some alternatives, and I think this is where things are gonna get really fun. The first thing that sticks out to me are the lights. Using lights are helpful, as they can get the attention of people, especially when you're using obvious colors like red and green. But there's a downside to this, and it's that you don't really understand the context of what they mean. I mean, sure, we know that red means bad and green means good, but if you didn't explain the automation to your wife or other people in your household, what does red and green mean in that context? D does it mean that you left the window open in the home or is the oven still on? We universally understand that red lights mean stop or watch out, but from what? A while back, I talked about the smart home user experience heuristics. Now, these are a set of guidelines that describe what makes an ideal user experience for automations and within the smart home. Now, this particular scenario touches on two heuristics that I've mentioned in the past, and that's insider knowledge and anti-ambiguous. Insider knowledge is when an automation requires specialized knowledge in order to be useful. But I, I promise you, your wife doesn't want it hard, and neither do you. Using your smart home automations shouldn't require memorizing patterns, combinations, or color codes. This isn't school. I created an automation that changed the color of my lights based on the status of the washer and dryer. And I had status lights for when someone enters the perimeter of my house when the alarm is on or when, well, actually it, it doesn't matter. All of us forgot what the colors meant. It was too much cognitive load. The insider knowledge principle says that the automation should be intuitive, so keep it simple. When you see a red light, even a stranger knows that it means stop or danger. Avoid creating clandestine outputs. And I know like you think that it looks cool and and, and it probably does, but I, I promise you, your wife doesn't want it hard and neither do you. This occurs if you have to memorize the different meanings or different aspects of an automation. The reason why this is unideal is because it's gonna lose its effectiveness due to the increased cognitive load on the person. Now, anti-ambiguous, 
This principle has some overlap with insider knowledge, but it basically states that an automation should not introduce ambiguity. Pop quiz. You're at a friend's house one night, and while chatting it up on the couch, the lights turn red. What are your first thoughts? What a cool party trick. Is something wrong? The answer is C. Now I'm just messing with you, but but it is B. But what's actually wrong? Should you be concerned and run out the house? Is a danger outside the house? The anti-ambiguous principle states that an automation should not introduce ambiguity. I know, brilliant. In this case, the automation was meant for your friends. So based on their family dynamic, this light is probably intuitive and clear. However, it does potentially break a few principles. That's, that's another video. Okay, another pop quiz. Assuming that the automation was meant for you, what would make it clearer? Okay, time's up. If you said adding voice announcements or some kind of notification, then you're correct. How you structure your automations boil down to intent. Is the alert meant for everyone or is it meant for just household members? Is the alert critical or is it informational? Now, the lights can stay. I'm not saying that the lights are bad, but I would probably add a smart speaker to the garage and have the automation explicitly state what's wrong. For example, within the garage, I do not know if there's a car or a person or something else entirely behind the garage door. The automation lights should turn on, and at the same time, the speaker should say out loud what the problem is. Just a heads up. Kids are playing in the driveway, so stay alert if you're leaving. This way, you can use the same lights, but increase its meaning. You can use it to let you know that the back door is still open, or that the stove is on, or that you should subscribe. Smooth. This ability to say specifically what's wrong segues into my next improvement, LLM Vision. Now, this could technically replace Frigate, but they work very well together, so you can keep them side by side. So LLM Vision lets you pass the camera feed to AI along with a prompt to analyze what's going on. You can tell the AI something along the lines of, let me know if there's something blocking the driveway. And then when the automation responds, it can be specific about what's actually going on. You don't need to create canned responses anymore, and you can allow your automation to be more flexible. Now here's one last thing to consider. I personally prefer automations to be very specific in purpose but flexible in practice. Here's what I mean. Watching the driveway as a safety precaution is a specific purpose, but in practice, it can manifest differently. As a result, I want a solution that is flexible, but clear. Don't worry if this concept still seems a bit vague. I'm gonna take it full circle and I'm gonna break this automation up into sections so you can see what I mean. You have the trigger, you have the action or logic, and lastly, the feedback you receive. Kids are playing in the driveway, so stay alert if you're leaving. Currently, our trigger is entering the garage, but from a safety perspective, that seems a bit problematic. What if someone was waiting by the garage? Would you really want to wait until you have to leave to find out? Our solution would need to be a bit more flexible, right? I would break the automation up like this. We will keep the same trigger, but we wanted to couple the logic so we can run whatever we need. What do I mean when I say decouple the logic? When we create an automation, it has two parts, a trigger and an action. By decoupling it, we split the action from the trigger. Now we can have an infinite number of triggers for a given action. In the crudest sense, this can be accomplished using conditional statements, but in the most elegant sense, this is an independent function or script. With our door open trigger, we can call two automations or scripts, the one for checking the driveway and the new one for analyzing the state of the home. If I bring it back to the earlier analogy, we now have an automation that's split into two. We have the same trigger, but for that trigger, we now are calling two different scripts each have their own unique logic, as well as their own unique outputs. Both responses can be further summarized by AI. That way it can seem a bit more cohesive. Most of the windows are closed, except for the one in Ethan's room. I also noticed that the garbage cans are blocking the driveway. Okay, so what's the advantage of this? And what does this have to do with being more flexible or specific in purpose and flexible in practice. This automation started out only concerned about what's in front of the garage when you left the house, but now it's able to alert you about anything you need to know within the house and outside of the house. At the same time, the automation responsible for keeping you safe, the one that is looking for suspicious activity, can still be used for suspicious activity even outside of this whole garage scenario.
Sorry to wake you, but this is important. I see a man wearing a hoodie in your driveway. It seems like they are trying to get into your car. Because we decoupled the logic, we can give it a new trigger. If activity is detected in the driveway when there isn't supposed to be, we can reuse the same logic from earlier for detecting obstructions in the driveway. The job of the automation is the same, but the input is different. Now, the way I restructured this automation is based off of the three R's, reading, reasoning, and responding. The reading phase is how the automation is triggered and contains the context. The reasoning phase represents the collection of independent logic that can be reused and triggered independently by the AI. And lastly, the responding phase is how we get notified. I talk about this in depth in the Jarvis Blueprint course, which can be found in the automation trilogy. So now you have this cohesive automation that is specific in purpose but flexible in practice. You can definitely make this in Home Assistant, but using something like Node-RED allows me personally to connect together these automations in ways that are repeatable. Anyways, if you're interested in learning how to use Node-RED like a champion, become a pro member and check out the Automation Trilogy. I have a section in there called Node-RED Made Simple, which can get you going. And while you're there, check out the smart home heuristics. I go over all the different heuristics and how they work and why it may be useful. And I think you're gonna like it. Or, or, or you can just watch this video. Oh, and Percy, thanks for the suggestion. If you have automation ideas, feel free to join the Tech Enthusiast community and post it on the community wall and share with everyone else. Okay, goodbye.